Good morning. Welcome to this event on how to increase the participation of women in politics with three of the most interesting leaders and more inspiring during the last uh, few years in Latin America. So we are going to have the Vice President of uh, Council of the Americas uh, here present. And so I send you a message of uh, welcome and, and our CEO has the floor, Season Seagull. Welcome to everybody. I would like to thank your presence. Uh, especially, I want to uh, welcome uh, the presence of Ms. Silvestre, ex-president of Chile, and Mario Eugenia Vidal, the ex-governor of the province of Buenos Aires. And also, I would like to say, just to say, that one of the overcoming the gender gap is one of the most important issues for us and for myself. And now I would like to give the floor to Rocio Velarde, who is the president of Citibank in Ecuador, who will uh, say a few words because Citibank, the foundation of Citibank uh, has been supported uh, us for this event on uh, for this issue of uh, um, Corona. Thank you, Susan. Welcome uh, to everybody. It's a great honor to be here with you. Besides being here representing City and the City Foundation, I am proudly representing the leadership of the Bank for Women. It's one of the six city countries that are today actually uh, leaders in, uh, the, in Latin America. During the last few years, City has put on the table a great commitment in terms of ethnic, uh, gender, and uh, equality in pay, and then starting conversations around all these uh, social issues. We look for different uh, answers because we knew that different voices are always going to generate a commitment long term. The conversations that we had inside and outside have not been easy. But we do know that to have actually further the, the progress of this issue, and we want to create a better atmosphere for our employees to give better services to our clients and to be uh, more uh, uh, partner with our communities. So, in, uh, uh, with this problem, uh, you know, we have to actually do the evaluation. This is going to generate circumstances. We have seen uh, the problems that uh, women leaders actually face every day in terms of the quality in pay and the lack of representation in the traditional jobs and also in the future. The evaluations have been made, and now we have to ask ourselves, you know, how are we going to be responsible as a society? And this is why the conversations, uh, the one that we are having today, are so important. Our region has advanced very much in the last 20 years. Uh, the gender gap, you know, is going to be better because we are going to build a society that is going to be more just. Uh, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Rocio, for your message and also for all this intellectual support and content that City Foundation actually gave to this uh, uh, the magazine. So today is how to increase the participation of women in politics. But before talking about where we want to get to, I want to talk a little bit about where we have been and uh, where are we now. So, Michelle Bachelet, it's a great pleasure to have you here with us today. You were president two times in Chile. You have a very distinguished and a very long career in politics, and also you were the first directors of UN Women and the first women in the entire American continent uh, of having the, the post of uh, Minister of Defense. What were the challenges that you had to face because you were a woman in politics, and what changes did you see throughout these years? Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Is, I'm very happy to be here, and this conversation is so important because Rosia was talking to us of several issues that the women actually 
have, but they continue, have to continue going on, and then, of course, they have to be part of the politics because, you know, we are going to look at the bronze women, but also the men, but uh, women in politics, that perspective of gender actually is lost, and therefore it becomes key. Beyond my experience, you know, we have to see that 25 years ago, there was the Beijing conference, <coughs> and, uh, you know, the, the, the human rights and the women's, uh, the women's rights were actually examined, so it, it was actually this uh, all over the world. There. So what are the problems that uh, we had at that moment and actually affected me and other people? Because there were many myths, uh, for example, that women cannot take stress or, because, or, the, or the problems in politics and the women actually, you know, uh, have actually different ideas in terms of the family uh, and other issues. Mm, but that was actually, you know, very much entrenched in the press and also in the public opinion. But, you know, this implied then that, that you know, we had to have actual access to informal and formal gatherings. So well, the, after the conference in Beijing, actually, the, the, you know, there was actually the, 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 the gender equality was actually examined. And then there were also like uh, some quotas that were set so that we let our women to participate in more numbers. And, you know, well, because there was discrimination, you know, probably if I had not been Minister of Defense, I, I would never have been uh, uh, actually uh, in, in, in front of the of the Chileans to become president, so uh, you know you know how was it you know well I always actually uh, did uh, a lot of work for the commission of my party, but um, to be able to have the space uh, to be able to be in, in, in able to be in Chile's because in general women actually they they, they have uh, a lot of merit. But the truth is that the women are capable of, uh, if they have the same conditions, uh, uh, because of course uh, in life that is difficult, but to be able to to have uh, adequate communication with people, uh, I believe that uh, you know that is important. I had many difficulties at the beginning, more than um, discussing ideas. They were worried that whether actually. Uh, I was going to be stuck here or there, or I was going to be capable to deal with certain situations and so on and so forth, but, you know. But whatever is new always generates a lot, a lot of, uh, I don't know, a, a lot of uh, uh, passion uh, during the first moments. But when I was Minister of Health, you know, actually, and when I became president, you know, then I wanted to be a president. So. It is important that women participate in politics uh, because, as uh, Kamala Harris, the, president, the vice president elect, said, because, because you know, it opens the eyes for little girls, you know, uh, to possibilities. So there are many obstacles, the financial, for example, if you want to be a candidate, you have to. Um, uh, to have a, a loan uh, at the bank. Uh, you have to actually look at people, actually, that uh, for people who understand the very important role that you will have as a woman. But those things happen, but I think it's part of what is new. And so anybody who faces a new situation, you know, I was the first minister in Latin America, but I was the fifth in the world. So, you know, the world is really backwards in terms of giving access to women to places where uh, uh, before it was uh, a realm of men. So we, there, we have been advancing, uh, but we still have a lot to go, a lot to go. President Bachelet, thank you very much. And it is very clear that you have been beyond all the formal uh, posts that you had. Uh, you were a uh, leader in all senses at the um, global level. Vice President Campbell Barr, thank you. Welcome. You also are a pioneer. You are um, uh, on the cover of America's Quarterly, and this is historical, not only for Costa Rica. You were the first woman, uh, Afro-descendant, who was elected as vice president 
in the American continent. Kamala Harris, now is the second one. So you have also been a leader in terms of the representation of women. And here in the magazine, you said something very interesting, and I'm going to uh, translate it very clearly. When a woman uh, makes an error, it's uh, an error that all women commit. It doesn't work that way with men. Well, I would ask you just to start uh, uh, to tell us if that is still true, and you know, uh, and then I thank you because it's a great pleasure to have you here with us. Well, thank you, Mr. and I'm very happy to be here with you, Brian. And good morning to President Bachelet because she's always, she's always an inspiration and um, uh, creating incredible opportunities to continue learning. Well, really, women, we continue facing. Obstacles and challenges that are different from men, that is true. The naturalization of the issue of uh, women's participation, we, we have advanced a lot because there's no doubt that we have advanced uh, to date. That has been one of the central elements, you know, many more little girls and, you know, the same uh, that Express Bachelet was saying, you know, actually. There's a lot of women, and then and there were women president. Now we have a vice president in the U.S. who is a woman. So it's also like very diverse kind of uh, women. But also it is true that the cultural transformation takes longer than the efforts that are done by the pioneer women. So. That not only you have to be more, you have to have more finesse uh, when uh, the woman actually makes a, a remark. But you know, the, the actual, actually, you know, if the woman is very good, she is extraordinary. You know, it is not like all women are. If she m makes a mistake, then in Costa Rica we had a, a terrible history uh, or story. Uh, and then when we had uh, Laura Chinchilla, president, who did an incredible uh, work as president, but when she was criticizing, the future was, okay, well, uh, there's going to be a lot of time. Again, like if they were going to lend us the space of power for a little bit to see how it worked, and not uh, really understanding that the political spaces is, uh, have to be shared. So the uh, women pioneer, well, we, we are the result, I'm the result of many other women who went ahead of me. Many women who face obstacles that were much more complex than the ones we face today. But I want to say that if there is one thing that I celebrate today every single day, is the thrust of younger women, the impetus, because they actually continue and they are uh, actually taking the best of here and there and uh, being in this one space and making some agreements with younger men and looking towards the future and actually being leaders at any cost. So I do believe that ideally those obstacles that we might have to face we are part of a very small group, and finally, I always try not to talk about all the, the different issues, but we are part of a very small elite group of women that had a lot of problems to get into those spaces. So even though we face different obstacles as the men, but when one looks uh, towards uh, young women, I'm totally convinced that, that the change and then everything has started already for the new generation. Thank you, um, Vice President. Um, well, in general, good morning. It's a great pleasure to have here with you. You were also a, a pioneer. You were the first governor of the province of Buenos Aires. And for those who don't know it, it excludes the capital city, and then it has uh, all of Buenos Aires and other territories. It is a province that has a lot of uh, riches, but it, uh, a lot of poverty. And you were there for years as governor. You did a lot of things among those you faced, uh, the, the organized crime. 
What were the challenges you had to face uh, beyond the conditions uh, in the province? Because you were a woman. Well, good morning, Ryan. Good morning to everybody, and also Vice President Campbell and everybody else. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And the truth is that uh, at the beginning, you were asking, where are we coming from? Uh, you have to uh, uh, remember that it was very hard for women to be able to vote. You know, it took a long time, and now we are fighting to have a parity in terms of the political representation because uh, we don't really have it yet. And this is uh, uh, something that we face uh, other inequalities. For example, the Beijing protocol that Expressing uh, Bachelet was uh, uh, mentioning. You know, women have more access to education all over the world than in Latin America, even in my country, more than men. But that is not reflected in more participation in the labor market, not even in the parity of uh, or equal pay. Uh, what happens in the politics and uh, access to power places is uh, uh, something that uh, shows the difference in other fields. So that is why nowadays, you know, uh, uh, representative chambers and all over and the judicial powers. Uh, um, there is no equality. So I think that uh, that is condition uh, uh, in general for women because women, not only we have our work, we also have our housework, our domestic work. In my country and all over the world, uh, women do uh, double or triple of the work in terms of men, in, in terms of domestic uh, issues. So when we have that double load, I think that in politics uh, had a, a consequence. You know, many times the, the, the fight for power is not something that is for women, you know, and I always fought against that because the defense of ideas and then defend ideas that are difficult, you know, that's not for women. For example, uh, province is a 40% of Argentina, the province of Buenos Aires is like the biggest in my country, and so I had, I was there 28 years for the Peronist uh, um, party. And then, you know, I was there facing all the men and all the other, you know, actually some of the uh, mayors had been in power for 20 years. And it, you know, it was very difficult, you know, to fight against me because I've been there a long time. And when I did my campaign, the question of many were how a woman is going to deal with it with uh, uh, men such as Belaga, how is he going to deal against the corrupt police and also against uh, organized crime? But, you know, how is she going to be able to make those decisions? Uh, more so that one of my adversaries uh, called me, and, and actually I became quite popular with that. Uh, she, uh, he actually called me Haiti. It seems that Haiti could not make those difficult uh, decisions. So, you know, well, that really didn't happen to me, actually. You know, though that is actually something that is shown. Um, I know, there is an idea that women cannot be in those spaces that are kind of difficult, and then that you, you have to be empathetic and you have to take care of children, and that it doesn't let us to compete in places like that. And then, as um, President Bachelet was saying, you have to be very competent. At these times when we talk about women presidents uh, that actually led uh, very well the pandemic with good decisions, I always say, there are very few of them. And I'm not surprised that because to be able to get to those places to be president, a woman has to be extremely competent, something that doesn't happen to men. So even though we have advanced a lot, also, I believe that we still have a long way to go, you know, and we have to have panel like this because the inequalities have to be actually visualized again. Before going to the second round of questions, I have a very quick uh, question for you. How did you answer that question? How is a woman going to face all those challenges? What did you tell? What did you say at that time? Well, what I used to say, well, maybe it's a time to change because during 28 years, men actually have not actually done anything in this province. So actually, maybe this is the time. Change genders. Very good presence. Very good response. So now we have talked a little bit about the past uh, uh, and the uh, present and the challenges, but we also have to highlight uh, that uh, the news uh, to that effect are not all bad. 
Actually, they are quite uh, uh, good. For example, women who actually have one third of the seats in legislatures, uh, uh, the regional and other places, in, Mex in pl places like Mexico and in Costa Rica too. That compared uh, to the U.S., for example, and, uh, I'm talking to you from there where the percentage of women in the national chambers is only 24 percent. So uh, Latin America um, goes beyond that. But one question for President Bachelet, and then I want it to be a conversation that is more informal among us. And uh, if you want to add anything, please do so. But what are the main challenges that we are facing so that that number increases even more? Well, when Mario Eugenio was saying, I was laughing because it seems that happened to me. You know, one error was not, well, it was my error. But it was really very bad. But of course, it was all women. And uh, Mario Hena was saying about, uh, uh, you know, about men, men and men. And then, of course, uh, anyway. But I believe that you know there is some uh, progress. In, and also think um, to those people that have, for example, more uh, higher percentage. For example, in Chile, actually, I force it that. We um, actually wanted at least 40% of women candidates, at least. And besides uh, that, I generated some incentives uh, that would make it interesting not only to uh, um, increase the number of women, but of quality. And so we were able to get a, a high percent, because before it was 14% only. So we still have a long way to go, because imagine because um, there is a, a cabinet that actually has a margin of actually and only four more than the half of the parliament are women and there are only you know 20 percent of the states actually uh, follow that but last year uh, in many countries uh, it was uh, 25 to 39 percent but we are talking at local level so it has been growing very importantly lately. But, for example, with COVID, the groups, the groups that were in charge of COVID, only 24% uh, is the average, uh, you know, is uh, in the others, are 18% are women. But so what is the news? That we have advanced, yes, uh, but uh, like, um, FC was saying that the movement uh, uh, of him, you know, all the, the hashtag Me Too and all that actually actually made uh, as visual as not only in the political participation, but also that women are going to face uh, uh, problems, uh, sex problems, and things like that. But as both were saying, we have to face structural barriers that make it very difficult that women can participate uh, more politically. For example, uh, uh, domestic waste. Before the pandemic, it was said that uh, you would need 157 years to close the gender gap. And it is uh, possible that this is actually uh, increased in the next few years because many women work in the informal economy and they have to actually uh, suffer a lot more. And they have to actually stay home and actually help children who are not able to go to school or actually work part-time only. So the International Labor Organization considered that uh, actually is going to be a problem for the labor market. In many countries, uh, women cannot open a, a bank account and they cannot get uh, um, a loan. And, you know, it has to do with inheritance laws and all that. So uh, this is a problem. Uh, and so 20% uh, less possibilities of actual create. So actually that has to do with the little girls that to have access because of the pandemic. 
So it's also this idea that women are weak, you know. I mean, to me, there was actually something. When I was candidate for the first time, they asked me, you are separated, you know. I mean, you don't have a man next to you. How are you going to face such great challenges as a, as a president without a man? I said, well, I've been doing that all my, all my life. I have good advisors, and I have a lot of friends that emotionally give me support. But then this is a stereotype. It's an invisible thing that not even women realize that they are actually uh, perpetrating, perpetuating it. So in communication, okay, for example, you know, uh, you know, there are like five men, I mean, you know, like if there were not uh, women that were competent, but on the other hand, I was saying, you know, because I say that all over the place, of the 11 countries that uh, evaluated this, five pre-COVID and seven were actually, that dealt with the COVID, probably seven were lead, led by women because they had actually uh, were capable to make rapid decisions and then they were transparent and they told the truth and therefore people believed in what they were saying and they followed uh, their advice. And so, of course, uh, there was also other factors, but I want to say that that shows that many of the myths and the stereotypes are totally false. Lately, I also, there's an element of that is an obstacle for many women. It's actually uh, uh, the uh, stalking women in politics. Uh, because uh, those social, you know, all those uh, uh, threats that women face, sexual and otherwise, you know, uh, through, the, through the social media. So this information... Many times, uh, uh, that is very helpful to women, you know, and also it is true that it also is bad for men, but uh, usually uh, uh, the attacks against women are more virulent and they are more sexualized. Also, women also suffer other types of discrimination because uh, it can be double or triple, for example indigenous women or Afro-descendants or women who actually uh, are a, an ethnic or religious minority. I mean, there are a number of women that beyond uh, uh, tr trying to get into politics, they have to face not only the fact that they are women, but also other issues. Because when, when I used to talk to um, people from on the senior, actually, I am, I am a very good uh, employee that I am very good because I'm good, but not because I'm woman. But I used to answer that, yes, I am good because I'm good, but also because I'm woman. I want everybody to recognize that. So the gender perspective generates that women actually are very responsible so that women can serve the best way. Well, I want to offer you the opportunity to react uh, to some of the uh, things that uh, President Vashele said. And also, as I mentioned, Costa Rica is one of the most advanced countries in, in terms of the representation of women in politics. What are the changes that exist uh, that you have observed uh, in the uh, Costa Rican uh, politics uh, with the presence of so many women at a very high level in uh, politics? I would like to say two things. First, Costa Rica, as most countries uh, that uh, increase the participation of women, uh, is there because there is a law that uh, it's actually uh, compulsory. And we have a quota law that does not allow any uh, political party uh, to participate if there is no parity. Uh, between men and women, we have a system, uh, electoral system, that favors that the final result uh, will be the one that we have because we elected through we elect through popular uh, list uh, from the different uh, um, political parties. So 20 years ago, or less than 20 years ago, when I became a, a, a post in, in Congress, you know, actually, that's when the law came into effect. At that time, the law forced 40% of uh, possible uh, 
positions in the popular um, list. And actually, I was uh, in a political party that uh, had, at that time, incorporated the, the party. So we did 26%. We are unique camera. And so most of, um, for the first time, we, uh, in that election in 2002, to from uh, 11 to 15 percent of women in Congress, we got up to 35 approximately. That is a change that is totally qualitative. So also the old arguments of, of uh, capacity, uh, the women that get there are capable, you know, if they don't get there well, it's too bad because there is this thing that if some and God there is because the others didn't do enough, which is absolutely false. It's absolutely false. And then, then you have the quotas. The quotas uh, uh, show that. Why? Because besides the results, when we were able to uh, be able to, um, that the space would be more feminine, not only it was demonstrated that there is not a qualitative difference between men who have guaranteed those places and the new women who came into those spaces, but also it was clear that actually, well, well those, so do some of the issues, but it is also true that there is a, a, a logic to create a, a, a stereotype of what is expected for women, and that is why I think it's a marvelous where President Bachelet <coughs> was speaking. <coughs> because I say that to participate in women, being non-traditional women, uh, how Minister of Defense also opens the uh, expectation that women are not only for the traditional social spaces, which is good that we participate also in there. So that doesn't mean that uh, we have to get out of here, but the truth is that we have to go in other uh, spaces. And the truth is that one of the central themes is that the more uh, women actually have actually portfolios that historically were not uh, women, in, uh, that is very important. So I think uh, this is, uh, uh, there are changes, uh, uh, but also in terms of the perspectives. Uh, so what is being discussed uh, uh, somehow incorporates the reality of women. You know, that was impossible before. It didn't exist. Uh, public policy starts uh, understanding that to be able to make decisions uh, and so on and so forth, there is a 50%, 50% of people who have to be considered because they have different situations. They are different types of laws that are actually uh, discussed. For example, in my country, there was a, a law that was actually uh, of uh, uh, street harassing. So if there was only, uh, you know, that was also there, um, concrete um, actions um, pertaining to the pandemic, uh, which are totally different because the women in those groups are actually making decisions. For example, we propose that the priority of the transfer of resources has to be towards women. We have to start to uh, spread because uh, all those women that actually have no employee and well, because uh, their resources are going to be better uh, distributed within the family. So I believe that there is a qualitative change, but has to be generalized. I have no doubt that I was being said that there is a, a theme that is related to the judicial power, which continues to be totally um, uh, the realm of men. So basically, all those positions are for men and continue being in my country. If, actually, it, it, it all is like that. So the way that we have to uh, take is, is a way that, well, I still refuse to think that we have to wait 200 and more years. We have to run. We have to have many more men who are uh, our allies. 
Okay. So the themes of uh, women had to do with the democracy and also, and, you know, the participation of women in the economy has to do with economics. The International Monetary Fund has been totally clear that because we have to be women in the labor market. So what happens when women are put in a position that are uh, less advantaged and there is less economic growth, there is less uh, distribution, they are actually wasting the creativity of the growth. A lot of people, the knowledge also some forms uh, that are uh, different to understand uh, politics with more empathy, as uh, President Bachelet was saying. So I think that things change. We have more uh, voice. We actually speak more clearly. And of course, we face, we face issues. But we have to still uh, withstand, and I say withstand, being treated differently, but also uh, claiming all the time that there are many, many other women also during the private sectors who are aware of all this. I coordinate this process of uh, economic empowerment, of financial empowerment of women, and also uh, in the corporations. Well, thank you. There is no doubt that those issues are, they are always important. They were always important, but uh, but you know, with the challenges that we are facing, with the need to recover economically and socially after the pandemic, and this is why uh, you were in the cover, and we say that you were the best possible recovery plan for the nation because because otherwise all those talents are being wasted. Well, the recovery is going to be slower. Well. We are starting to get many, many questions. We have a, a great uh, number of people uh, through the WebEx, and then you can use the WebEx using the functions of the Q&A, uh, sending a question on those who are here through the social networks. Uh, they can actually do um, logins with uh, ASCOA. Well, Mario Eugenia, before anything else, I have a question for you. And uh, also, I would ask you to answer. In the number, we made five recommendations to improve uh, gender parity, better access to financing for uh, uh, women, and finding new and creative ideas to present women as models to follow, and also to um, target uh, uh, women with low income and also to I I improve all the positions for women uh, against violence. And the fifth, actually, it was a surprise. I knew that it was an issue, but I didn't know at the beginning that we were going to highlight this as much as the other four recommendations. And the fifth was to achieve that men actually do their part in the domestic and private work. So you actually has uh, said something really good. That is very important, especially now because there are services that that um, lack of uh, balance is going is becoming uh, worse because of the pandemic. Well, well, I'm going to answer, but uh, I would like to say something uh, to what uh, Etsy and President Basile said. And I believe that important thing is to advance on how to overcome the challenge. And then it, it has to do in party. So the quotas have uh, demonstrated that they are, uh, are weaker, but they, they, they actually start in the country. There is a 30% in the parliamentary list, and that uh, ended up like a, like a ceiling, so that there would not be more women than 30%. Fortunately, first in the province of Buenos Aires, because of our initiative and also because of the agreement with the other uh, uh, forces, actually. The parity law actually was approved. So, you know, actually it's going to be very soon, like 50% of the positions are going to be occupied by women. But 
Uh, going back to your question, Brian, I think it is key first that we have to understand that there is a priority, yes, actually, but because of the programs uh, that take care of children. The programs uh, that President Bachelet actually started in Chile, actually those are key so that women have time and they actually have the possibility to go and study. And also the cultural uh, changes are very important and uh, that the men understand that also, that also part of their work. When I used to campaign many times when uh, somebody asked me a question like that, inevitably it was, you know, the other women, you know, how did I do to be able to have a family and then pursue politics? I mean, that question would never be posed to a man. So I think the extension of uh, the care uh, for women, you know, in our conversation, we actually had 40%, uh, um, 40,000 actually uh, to be able to participate in the labor market. And during these times of COVID, with uh, the transfer of income are uh, generalized even more so than they were in Latin America because poverty has increased as a consequence of the recession that COVID generated. I think that there is an opportunity to actually tie that transfer to the formal education of women. I think that is key, and we did it in the process of Buenos Aires. We went to from 175 students to a million, and 60% of those adults were women, and 80% were poor women. I think that what a woman gains in formal education, it stays there uh, forever. It's a capital that remains, so the environment through formal education for women and the care of children are key. Uh, President Bachelet or um, President F.C. Campbell, you know, as Mario Eugenia was saying, I always believed that it was essential uh, education. Um, because, you know, actually, to actually take care of the children at a very early age. Yesterday, I participated in a panel with a foundation, and that they were talking about the uh, problems that, uh, that children actually, not in terms of conflict also, but also in, in, in uh, uh, other issues. And how that creates a problem long term. So first of all, I have the, the impression that young people nowadays, actually young couples in Latin America that are more educated understand better that is a both responsibility. I have a lot of friends, people who work with me uh, who are young that, you know, I there is a, uh, you know, there is something else that they are calling, you know, there is an uh, association called uh, Padres Suecos. Because, uh, you know, they take uh, uh, example from <coughs> Sweden because, uh, you know, that actually is uh, a shared uh, job. Because, uh, you know, actually, uh, you know, uh, men also uh, have uh, um, paternity leave, you know. In my country, we have only 10 days. So actually, those actually uh, uh, links and uh, uh, are very important for the future. But when we have to have a cultural change with that is a responsibility for both. And then um, I believe also that besides this recommendation, you know, I will... Uh, you know, I don't know, you know, we, we, we went to do the proposal, but I think that your suggestions are good, but not enough, because it's not enough. And you have to take into consideration all the obstacles, uh, economical uh, and political and all that. But it is key to have women with experience in Latin America, because no, the, 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 the situation all over the world is quite nasty because uh, the way of looking at women, you know, when we were looking at a small company, actually, <clears throat> in politics, we also have generate platforms to be able to support them. 
they might be fantastic, but they need more support. So, it can be in the formal or informal market. <coughs> Another thing is to support uh, women who are leaders. Because one of the women is, for example, you know, you know, actually, you know, from the time they are small, they say, no, no, you cannot do this, you know, this is not for you, from the time they are really small, you know. So actually their self-esteem is actually, you know, you have to have a family who is actually going to uh, help you develop this kind of thing. And also then your physical aspect is also whether you're pretty or not. So throughout their life uh, we have to face a lot. So I think it is important to strengthen on that. And this is key what was in, being said in my country. Actually, you know, you, when they were talking about uh, women, you know, you have to talk about economy and whatever, because otherwise, again, uh, it's uh, uh, another woman just talking about issues that have to do with women. So in all those themes, actually, all this, you have to do a lot of work. So because, you know, it seems that this idea that women can only talk about women, uh, so... So the care of women, the care at home. So basically, to participate in the social and economic uh, issues, but also to be able to, I think that these quotas are actually very good because in my question, I was not able to get a 40% just uh, candidates, they were not elected. So I didn't achieve what I wanted. Um, well, I actually, I asked uh, when a person, they said no because, because a senator actually, you know, actually, see you now. And then another thing, to incentivate other political parties uh, to incorporate the participation of women and also, we have to do uh, something in the cultural and economic issues to have programs so that if they elected were women, they actually would be able to have uh, additional financing and then also tools that we actually um, enable women to make decisions in all areas. <coughs> I you know, I end, uh, started with a 4 or 5 percent of participation, and I ended up with a 40 percent. So we have to have more candidates because finally it's going to be better. <laughs> well, the important thing is we have a lot of questions. With all the people that are here with us through different planets, we have a little more than 10 minutes. So, uh, two very fast questions uh, about those um, mentors that you were mentioned, um, President Bachelor. The question is, men in power, they are mentors for other men. How women in politics, according to your experience, and actually I would like to add something. Well, starting maybe with <coughs> Ms. Campbell. Well, my career policy uh, actually came from social activists, and it was a process of political change with, uh, uh, which my political party that facilitated uh, for me to get into politics. But I would like to mention very rapidly that uh, one of the elements is that we have to be aware of our leadership as women, and we support the ones that are starting. Not only to uh, support them <clears throat> teaching and sharing experiences, but also to talk about uh, safety, generate support groups, and to bring them to the table 
to actually tell about uh, our own experiences, I think that that is something that I did do daily with women. And not only with the younger ones, we have to remember that you have young women, but they are not young. Uh, they are young to be in politics, but they are not uh, age young. Because many uh, women come into, into politics uh, after they are 40 years old, so there is also a mentor role. And then I also wanted to highlight something you mentioned. That there is no cultural change, and we actually challenge the men for, those, uh, for that change. They have to be willing to make important <coughs> steps. And this is not only... An issue of women, because it has to be related also with the services that actually that the states can give and also companies so that more women can participate. Maria Eugenia, what do you have to say? Well, do you uh, well, have mentors and they were uh, both men, and this is not surprising because politics in Argentina is a space like in the rest of the world that is uh, not a woman's uh, space. And for us, it is uh, difficult to make the decision to participate, but I do recognize that for me to be governor, there were others that actually fought for uh, for that before. And then there is the way for me. And a woman who actually that fought, and my name is uh, Gabriela Fernando Mejindes, she is a very high-profile woman uh, for human rights in Argentina. And when I actually faced my campaign, actually, you know, uh, I went to see her, and then she gave me a lot of time. Not only that, but in the last four years, many times she wrote to me during um, difficult moments, and she uh, went along with me. So that solidarity, not only that uh, she actually fought before me, even though she lost the fight, but uh, these people who uh, accompanied me during this process, actually, they were, they were quite helpful. And there's no doubt that along my career, I wanted uh, to promote, uh, the, for example, one of the, my team members, one became a, a senator, and many grew. Um, I, didn't, I didn't achieve all that as governors, but I didn't have uh, enough women in my cabinet, and that was an error because, you know, you know, I wanted them to continue growing and not stay with me in the province of Buenos Aires. So it, it uh, took me a few more years to actually tell women, other women, that they were ready. And I am sure that uh, they are also uh, uh, making great contributions in their own spaces. So... We should not look at ourselves as an exception, but as part of the parity that we have to build also for the future so that when others come behind us, uh, you know, whatever mess or whatever noise we make actually uh, opens the way for the rest. Okay, this is uh, an issue that we have mentioned, but I think that it would be good to go a little deeper. The question, how can you find better ways to finance uh, women in politics? I would like to uh, start my career, but it seems that the financing is difficult. How are you going to overcome that problem? Well, I want to say something that my mother actually was a director, you know. If you want to, um, you can get married and have children, but that's not an obligation. And since that, since I was a child, I had that with my friends. We actually, we were feminists and so on. And then we were five women ministers. We used to call each other. We used to support each other. And so that uh, actually... Uh, we actually work to uh, support women, but it's not easy. It depends on the system in different countries. For example, um, in my country, the parties have certain uh, types of finance, uh, and the candidates actually can uh, request a loan according to the quantity of votes that they actually can uh, get. So it's not easy. I think it is an issue that we have to work uh, better 
because uh, the conditions uh, have to be there, uh, and sometimes the conditions are not the best. So maybe we discovered uh, how to do it, uh, you know, uh, actually, we saw through Obama that people, common people wanted to contribute. So uh, a, a lot of uh, small donations that were generated that actually helped a lot. So you can actually go to the party if you do have a party that can support you but also to the citizens. Because if you want to be a candidate, candidate, you have to, uh, to, to have the possibility and see if people are going to believe you. Because to generate that space around you will help you think, for example, I invited uh, Chilean artists that, that supported me and they donated uh, pictures or paintings and uh, music and uh, I uh, look for all types of ways legally, of course, uh, to be able to have a campaign. But it depends on the level of the campaign and the size of the campaign, but it can be very important. I think that you can have to start thinking about what are the resources uh, that you can get. Well, I want to say two things. And I want to say that because during my political career from the beginning, there were feminist women from one organizations that actually uh, uh, helped me to be able to accept uh, to be a candidate. So uh, Marta Solano, who is working in the Minister of Sports, but she, well, I, uh, there were a number of people who helped me. And the second about financing. I come from a country that has public financing for the uh, political campaigns, and some of us actually uh, uh, we actually wanted to be uh, to be public because anybody who pays for a campaign um, uh, has to is important. And besides. There were people who gave a lot, but there were uh, some that actually gained a lot. Uh, I believe that uh, I agree with President Marshall Adam that you have to be very creative to get funds because you, you have a realistic uh, expectation um, with that, that that effort is going to be uh, actually. If you're not sure, they actually don't go in there because. Uh, but. Um, you have to create a structure, not only a political one, but a financial also, to create resources so that they are available to face the process. Well, thank you. We have very little time, but one question that comes about Chile, and it is for you, President Bachelet. If I'm not mistaken, we have not talked about that the new constitution in Chile is going to be written by an, uh, an assembly that is going to have the gender parity in mind. So this is uh, the first assembly with those conditions. So, well, could you actually tell us a little bit about that and what impact? that parity uh, of that uh, final document is going to have. Well, I'm going to say um, something about that because actually, you know, I forgot because because uh, we have the uh, parity convention that is called, we have two options, but well, first, the Constitution actually says on the end, when there was a change of the Constitution, then I sent it to the Parliament, but then actually it stayed there for the new government. But then there are two models. One, that it was a mixed uh, uh, composition, first uh, parliamentary and the other were the people. And then a person that was selected by the but it was 50% uh, in, in parity, gender parity. So, the vote actually was for the uh, new constitution. It was a great stage because uh, I think it's fantastic because it's going to have in it uh, uh, gender parity. But of course, we are going to have all types of men and women, but it's going to mean that the constitution is going to have that uh, debate about gender parity. And then 
they are going to be uh, very present on these issues that have to do with women. And then I have to say goodbye because at 4 p.m. I have a meeting with New Yorkers. So I am sorry, Epsi and uh, Maria, and to everybody. And Susan, please, I am sorry. I'm sorry. I have to leave. Well, sorry, you know, we are uh, going over the time, Mr. President, but I just want to say a, a few seconds. If the other panelists can stay, I know that you have to go, but... Um, Governor, I want to give you... The, 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 to say something, what uh, advice would you give a young woman who would be evaluating to go into politics? First, uh, since we don't have party, you know, the idea that the way is not going to be easy, but also that it's worthwhile to build a, a way for those who come behind us. And there is a difference. I think the difficult thing is to have the advantage of giving ourselves the possibility of being a pioneers, like you were saying, and to show that the stereotypes and the prejudices are wrong, and to do it from action, not as just uh, mere uh, people who are just looking on, you know, because in uh, Buenos Aires we have a lot of women who have a lot of talent and politics, uh, the political world is waiting for us, for, for them. And this is key at the time when the representative democracies are going to be put into question. It is key so that they are really representative. Women, uh, uh, in number, we are more than, than, than men, so we need to have, uh, to have better representation. We it cannot be um, the, the religious numbers that we in the legislative and uh, political world. Because, you know, we don't have to have to show all the time that we are better than the average, you know. Um, so, well, you know that uh, during the next few years, uh, well, uh, we at this moment in Latin America and all over the world, it is very difficult to find uh, hope with everything that we went through with the pandemic and with all the social issues. But this issue of representation, I think that uh, in Latin America is quite ahead as compared to other regions. And uh, with Chile and my country in the U.S., uh, and um, with more work of people uh, and leaders uh, like you, uh, it's going to be uh, even better. So here from the Council of the America, uh, we have actually promoted this within, uh, in the number with the magazine and also the Women's Spirit Network also has been very important to actually get women uh, together and also this is something we are going to be working on. So thank you very much uh, for all of you who participated to the City Foundation for uh, the support. Well, good morning. Thank you. Thank you.